next we have our featured guest, uh, Beth Garrett. And Beth going to navigate the trail up to the front. Um, so, Beth, um, I know last time you gave us an overview of all there's a lot of details this time of what your office actually does, even about passports and all these other things that we've learned. Now, it's amazing how much I've learned about the inner work of Lakeland County because of some of these things. We actually um, do a lot of work in Lakeland County. I appreciate you indulging me this morning and sure. having me back. I'm going to take a little bit of time this morning. I'm going to clarify a few things okay. that um, some information that you were given last week, and then I'm going to expand on a little bit more information for you. I'm going to educate everybody about the Clerk of Courts Office, because not everybody knows very much about the Clerk of Courts Office. I'm a down-ballot uh, election, a down-ballot race, and everybody says, oh, the Clerk of Courts Office, what do they actually do? I know that they're at the courthouse, but unless you have business at the courthouse, you don't really know what that office does. So I want to clarify a few things, and, and then I'm going to tell you an awful lot about my office, and I, I even brought props, so you're going to get a whole lot of information. Folks, for those of you who don't know, we went here last night, Beth is the clerk of court for Lexington County, so let's give her a, a round of applause. Thank you, I appreciate that. Um, you know, I'm not here to impugn anybody's integrity. I'm going to start off by saying that, but I think everybody needs to know the fact. Um, there, there are some candidates, people that are running for this office, and I think that you need to be qualified to be the clerk of court in Lexington County. Um, last week there were some allegations made and some, some misinformation that was given. The person that spoke to you last week um, implied that she was a school teacher and an educator. That information is absolutely invalid. And, um, she has a two-year degree. She does not have a school teacher certificate. She never taught school in Virginia. And that information is available for review. And the documentation is available for review. Here's the information from the University of South Carolina where she received a two-year degree in the 70s. And here's a letter from the Commonwealth of Virginia that states she was never employed there. I think it's, it, it, it's important to understand if you are going to certify that you're someone and you've done something, that you are accurate in the information that you provide. Um, second of all, I want to make sure everybody's clear that I do have a degree. I did attend the University of South Carolina. I even brought my transcripts and where I graduated from the University of South Carolina because all I did was study law um, for four years. That's what I did. Now, I don't have a law degree, but I certainly all I did was take law class at the University of South Carolina. And that's all I've done for 20 years. I brought my resume because for the last 20 years, all I've done is work for law firms and be the clerk of court. I have an abundance of experience with the law, and I think that's necessary. Unless you're going to be an attorney to run the courthouse, you need to have a factual basis for what you're doing. So let's talk about the clerk of court and what we do there. The clerk of court's office is the keeper of the records, and we keep the records for every lawsuit that's ever filed in Lexington County, whether it's common pleas, family court, or general sessions. And general sessions is criminal court. We keep the records for probate court. We keep the records for liens that are filed in the courthouse. We keep juvenile records. We keep adoption records. We actually schedule the docket for family court and for common pleas, which is civil court. General sessions is run by the solicitor. That's our job. We schedule the dockets for the family court judges every week, week by week, year by year that goes by. We handle all those records. I handle all the foreclosure documents. I actually sign off on those for the Master in Equity in Lexington County. That is a huge responsibility when you take someone's life in your hands, when they're getting ready to lose their home. And I have hundreds that come across my desk every week and it's only gotten worse when the economy has come down. Now I'll tell you there are a lot that I just don't sign. I review each and every one of those documents before I put my signature on it because that's your life. That's your livelihood. And I don't know if you remember or not, but a year ago when the banks were just signing off on those in bulk and people were losing their houses and the banks were making a lot of mistakes, there were stacks that sat on my desk like this and I just refused to sign them until I had a, an order from the Chief Justice. In fact, I had some disagreements with the, the judges about them, but they sat on my desk, and some of those were recalled, because it's important. 
Everything we do at the courthouse affects someone's life every day. People go to jail. People are adopting children. People are paying child support. It affects every, every decision we make there affects someone's life. Now, when I ran for the clerk of court's office in 2004, I made some promises, and I kept every one of them. I said that I was going to increase child support collection, and I said I was going to implement a, a child support debit card. There wasn't one in Lexington County. In fact, there wasn't one in the state. When I took over in 2005, many of you may remember and some of you may not, but I moved my bank accounts from BB&T to MBSC. And I had quite a little tiff with Lexington County Council. My husband was a member at that time. And I had quite a little tiff with them, and they were upset with me because I moved my bank accounts. But it was important because BB&T, um, I wouldn't say they couldn't provide the services I wanted, but they didn't want to provide the services I wanted because Lexington County had just entered into a banking contract with them, and the services I wanted wasn't part of that agreement. And they didn't want to provide those services. So I went to a bank that would provide them. I spent $8,000 of my own money because I hired my own lawyers. Kirk Morgan, in fact, was just named the number one litigator in Lexington County this year. $8,000 out of my own pocket to fight what I thought was an important issue in Lexington County. After months and months, we sat down and negotiated with bb &T. They agreed to provide the services. I agreed that it wasn't worth the continued fight. I moved the bank accounts back to bb &T, and the debit card was founded in Lexington County. We don't write checks anymore, and it saved the taxpayers a lot of money, and I'm going to tell you how much money it saved the taxpayers. We saved the taxpayers $60,000 in postage every year. Just in postage every year because we don't mail out checks anymore. $60,000 a year over eight years, the two terms I've been in office, is a half a million dollars. Now you, on top of that, the manpower, not to cut the checks, the checks themselves, not to stuff the envelopes, not the core of the checks to send them out, is about another half million dollars over eight years. That's a million dollars that my administration has saved the taxpayers of Lexington County over eight years. Off of my $8,000 that I spent out of my own pocket, because it was important, because I made a promise to the taxpayers that that's what I wanted to do. I said I was going to increase child support in Lexington County, and that's what I did. Since... Um, 2004, when I took over, the collection of child support in Lexington County was $14,964,000. In 2011, we collected $17 million. That's a little more than $2 million every year that we've increased child support collections in Lexington County. The way that happens is that my staff and I went in and we reviewed and audited every child support case in Lexington County. And there are thousands of them. And you have to audit them. And we issue the rules of show causes, and we issue the bench warrants for the judge to sign, and they go to the sheriff's department. My predecessor chose not to have a relationship with the sheriff's department. He had a private process server, and that was not a very successful program. We chose to make a successful program, and we chose to partner with the sheriff's department, and the Fugitive Task Force was born. When the Fugitive Task Force was born, we implemented Operation Stocking Stuffer and Operation Last Chance. And in 2008 alone, Operation Last Chance, Operation Stocking Stuffer, for 30 days, we apprehended 127 persons. We concentrated on people who owed $10,000 or more this year. We apprehended 127 persons who owed more than $10,000 in child support. And we arrested people that owed $1.9 million in child support. Let me interrupt for a second. Dave, is somebody out there? You, uh, folks, everybody look, look outside. There's a car out there. He's moving. He's moving when I move the lines down. What is he see right here? He's I'm not being paranoid here. Yeah, what's I, get going on? I think you're being paranoid. No, I'm not being paranoid. I'm being cautious. Okay. All right. I understand. This somebody moved up. It looks like a 19, 20 year old, 21. Okay. All right. Sorry, sorry to interrupt. Go ahead. I just told him. You know, we're not really a mafia, right? <laughs> <laughs> 
I guess I was telling you, Corey. And I left my gun at home this morning. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got In 30 days, we collected one. We. We arrested people or apprehended people that owed $1.9 million in child support. Operation, and this was our sixth successful year in that. This is my eighth year in office. In Operation Last Chance in May, this is an opportunity for individuals to come in without the police picking any doors and make arrangements with the clerk of court's office to settle up your debt or make payment arrangements so you don't have to go to jail. Fifty people made arrangements to settle up $435,000 worth of child support this year in 2011. We are making changes. We are doing good things at the clerk of court's office. On top of that, I told him, I said, we've got we've to save the taxpayers some money, some more money. I reduced my operating budget since 2005 by more than 35%. Here are the numbers. 35% I reduced my operating budget. That's taxpayers' dollars that we've reduced. We haven't added any staff, and we certainly haven't reduced any cases that we're handling. That's what the clerk of court's office is doing for the taxpayers. I've kept my promises. I've worked hard, and I want to continue to work hard. We have a new case management system, a child support case management system that's set to deploy in 2013 um, that I understand I'm not really supposed to know anything about, but I've worked on it for two years and I've got another year's worth of work before it deploys. And we've been working with the state and the county department of social services and the judicial department. We are in the middle of a banking RFP right now. Part of our movement to save the taxpayers more money is that when the state case management system deploys in Lexington County, all the child support payments will be made at one central location. A bank out of New York won the RFP for this service, so all of Lexington County taxpayers' money would go through this bank in New York. Marcia and I have been working diligently. We've narrowed it down to three banks because there is one type of account that would converge with this new uh, program, Child Support Case Management Program. And we've narrowed down three banks that would give our citizens a bank account, even non-credit worthy citizens, a bank account that would converge with this new Child Support Case Management System. That would keep all of our local taxpayers' dollars in a local bank in Lexington, South Carolina. <coughs> so maybe I'm not in the office every day, I certainly wasn't in the office every day last week because I was at the administration inter, administration building interviewing three banks to try to keep Lexington County taxpayer dollars in Lexington County. But I'm working. I'm working for Lexington County. That's what I'm doing. I haven't taken any questions. Okay. This, we have Suzanne's running for a, a clerk of court. Uh, we had the other clerk of court here a few weeks ago. So Suzanne's going to give a presentation and then we'll have a Q&A right after that. So let's give Suzanne another round of applause. Thank you very much. It's a, a wonderful to be up this morning and be with all of you. My name is Suzanne Moore. Uh, some of you have noticed the resemblance that I have with my sister, um, who is Roxanne Wilson. Um, apparently, a lot of people in Lexington did not realize that Roxanne Wilson was a twin sister. Some years ago, I've been in Lexington 15 years, and I applied for a job with the county 15 years ago, and they told me, you are the perfect person for this job. And I thought, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to start. I'm going to get to know a lot about Lexington. I'm going to get involved in it. Um, who is Roxanne Wilson. Um, apparently, 
a lot of people on Lexington did, did not realize that Roxanne Wilson was a twin sister. Some years ago, I've been in Lexington 15 years, and I applied for a job with the county 15 years ago, and they told me, you are the perfect person for this job. And I thought, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to start. I'm going to get to know a lot about Lexington. I'm going to get involved in um, local politics. I'm going to be helping the people of Lexington. And they said, but Suzanne, we have a problem. We can't offer you this job because you're perfect for it in every way, but you look like Roxanne. <laughs> and I, I looked at him so funny, and I just stood back and I said, I do not know what kind of discrimination this is, but I'm certain my attorney will be able to figure it out. Well, of course, they're still talking about that in downtown Lexington. My attorney is still figuring out a number of things, and I'm blessed to be here today to tell you that I am ready and prepared to serve Lexington once again, as I have in the past. I've taught school in Lexington. I have also served in the clerk of court's office for five years, handling all types of issues that have come through the court. I am running for clerk of court because I want the court to be better than it is. Anytime you have someone that runs an office that thinks that they can't improve things, it's time for a change. And Lexington deserves more than what we have now. I was the executive assistant to the current clerk for four years. I worked in family court and helped women and gentlemen who were seeking child support. I worked closely with the judges. I worked closely with attorneys. So I, I, I come knowing a lot about what goes on in the courthouse, and I know what does not take place in the courthouse that should be taking place in the courthouse. Uh, a lot has been said about um, the clerk, and I'm not here to besmirch her or to say anything um, terrible about her. I'm here to tell you the truth. Now, you mentioned, Steve, earlier that there was an article in the beloved Mr. West paper this past week about um, the other Mrs. Moore writing back about my taking attendance for the clerk. Well, I'm here to tell you that she did tell me to take attendance. I don't care how eloquent she is in her writing, that I did take attendance for the clerk because she asked me to. That was my job to take attendance for all employees. So I did do that, and the current clerk missed 109 days in 2009. Now, if you figure that up, the average person works 20 days a month, and you divide 20 into 109, that's over five and a half months of work. She was not there for five and a half months. Now, some of you are retired, some of you may still work, but I'm telling you, if I was teaching school and I missed five and a half months of teaching, they would come to me and say, I'm sorry, we have to ask you to leave. We're going to have to hire a full-time teacher. If you missed five and a half works from your small uh, weeks, <coughs> excuse me, from your small business, let me tell you that till is not going to be open and closed. The current clerk has been there. She has instituted some plans. To be perfectly honest, some of those plans were already in effect before she came on. She just picked up the ball and ran with it. Yay! I'm delighted to tell you that she did a wonderful job doing what was already in motion. She does show up occasionally. She's there representing you, but she's not there at 8 o'clock in the morning. She's not there at 5 o'clock in the afternoon, and she's not there numerous days when people need to see her. But she has Ms. Moore to do her bidding for her. And I am Man. Vicky Garrison. Welcome. Professional photographer, play St. Claus Christmas. No kidding. Maybe. You can say really, you can't imagine that? <laughs> <laughs> a little elf, maybe, yes. <laughs> nice to see you. But anyway, I am running because I feel like Lexington deserves to have someone that will be at work every day. I'm running because I feel like the, the folks that go to the courthouse need a courthouse that is warm and welcoming. I feel like they need someone that is willing to go beyond what has been done so far to assist them. I want to be that clerk of court who knows how to help people, who doesn't push their problems off on someone else. I want to be there to serve the people of Lexington. I may look like Roxanne Wilson. I may be related to other people in politics, but I am my own person. And I know what I bring to the table is truth and honesty. This article that you mentioned somewhat attacked my integrity and my character. Um, 
I laughed at first, and then I suddenly got very serious. My character and my honesty and my Christian womanhood has never been attacked like this before. I do not lie, I do not cheat, and I generally don't associate with those that do. I was a Girl Scout leader for four years, I was a Girl Scout for 12 years, and a den mother for six years. I know what truth and honor is. I know what integrity is. I am the personification of those values. And I hope when you go to vote on June the 12th that you will remember Suzanne Moore and will consider voting for me because I believe that I can bring a fresh face and a fresh, honest look before I come. Thank you once again for having me today. Don't applaud yet yeah, because I have one other thing to say. Good morning, Mayor. It's Friday, March 23rd, here in the beautiful state of South Carolina. And we have our featured guest is Tommy Windsor. He's running for clerk of court for Lexington County. And uh, Tom, is, is this your first time to run for this, this office? Yes, this is my first time to run for clerk of court. And why, why are you running? Two reasons. Basically, uh, I feel that uh, we have a lot of inefficiency and waste in government. And I think Lexington County deserves better in their clerk of court's office and from all their elected leaders. And those are the two main reasons I'm running. And Tommy's going to talk about that more in his presentation. But uh, again, if you're visiting South Carolina, please stop by and you're showing here next to the airport. And as always, it's a great day, South Carolina. Come see us. See you later. Okay. Let's move on. Our featured guest, Tommy Windsor. Tommy will so come up and talk about why he's running for uh, Lexington County Court. Court. Let's give Tommy a round of applause. Thank you. Uh, good morning, everybody. Thank y'all for letting me be here today. Uh, um, I, I appreciate Steve having invited me. Let me tell y'all something. Steve wears another hat that is very, very difficult to wear. And that hat is being chairman of the Lexington County Republican Party. I was chairman of the County Republican Party for four years, from 1997 to 2001. And let me tell y'all something. It's like herding cats sometimes. <laughs> it's a very, very difficult job. So, Steve, my hat's off to you for even wanting to have, even do it. But <clears throat> my name is Tommy Winter, and I'm running for Lexington County Court of Court. And I want you to know that on day one, when I take office, I will repeal Obamacare. <laughs> I just want you to know, okay, it's going to happen. They've all been saying it, so I thought I might as well say it too. We will repeal Obamacare day one in a Windsor court administration. <laughs> so, seriously though, let me ask y'all a very important question. How many of you in this audience, by a show of hands, know what the clerk of court does? Okay, very good, very good, okay. Now the most important question. How many of you care? <laughs> okay, very good. Because usually when I ask these questions in that order, so few hands come up on the second one. You think a few come up on the first one? So few hands come up on the second one. Because we're like, the clerk of court. What does the clerk of court do? I don't really care. Well, let me just give you in a nutshell what the clerk of court does, okay? Very, very quickly, very simple explanation. The clerk of court is like the filing cabinet for the court. Okay? Documents that are filed in the clerk's office, uh, the uh, pleadings, the lawsuits, uh, evidence, all that is kept at the clerk's office. They're responsible for keeping all the records for the court. Of common pleas and the family court, they set the docket as to when the cases are going to be heard. They pull jury pools for the juries to be selected from. And something else they do is they're responsible for collecting and dispersing all court order child support now money. So a lot of money comes through the clerk's office. Now, the second part, why should I care? I'll tell you why you should care. Because several million dollars of your tax dollars are managed by the clerk of court. That's why you should care. That's why you should care who the register of deeds is. That's why you should care who's the auditor, the coroner. Millions of your taxpayer dollars are managed by the person who is the clerk of court. And that is important. And you need to be, to be concerned about who holds that office. Now, why am I running? Two simple reasons. First of all, I want to cut 
waste and inefficiency in government. And having worked in government, it exists, y'all. I saw it every single day as to how we could make government run more efficiently. And you know what? For whatever reason, the decision makers just don't do it. I don't know why. They don't want to work that hard, maybe. I don't know. But it's not that difficult to, to, to cut government and make it more efficient. <clears throat> and secondly, I believe that Lexington County deserves better from its elected leaders. They deserve a lot better from their elected leaders. And those are the two main reasons that I'm running. Now, what is Tommy Windsor going to do when he gets elected clerk of court? First of all, I'll tell you this. To make the office more efficient, I want to put all public documents that are in the clerk's office online. If you can go to the clerk's office and look at it, and it's a public document, why can't you pull it up on your computer? They do it in Charleston County. Why can't we do it in Lexington County? Ought to be able to do that. What, how that makes that more efficient is you don't have to have people going back there and pulling files, which the more time that file is touched, the greater risk of there being a mistake being made. So it just makes it easier for a taxpayer to do business with the clerk of court's office. Isn't that what we're about? Making it easier for taxpayers to deal with their government. Second thing I'm going to do is I'm going to put the clerk's budget online so that you can see how your tax dollars are being spent. Sure money. Why can't you look and see how the money in the clerk's office is being spent? And actually look at it how it's compared to other years if there's been increases or decreases. And if you've got a question about it, you can call me and I'll try to answer it for you. Or we'll get the answer. Other thing I'm going to do, I'm going to put my daily calendar and schedule online so that each and every citizen of Lexington County, if they want to know what Tommy's doing today, they'll be able to pull it up and look at it. They'll be able to see that, you know, one of my passions, y'all, is I officiate high school football. That's one of the things I've been doing for about 12 years. And if Tommy's got a game on Friday night, they'll be able to pull up the calendar and they'll see Tommy's got a football game at Rich Springmanetta tonight. They'll be able to know that. You know why? Because I work for the people. They deserve to know that. They deserve to know what I'm doing on their time. That's not too much to ask if you're elected leaders. It's really not. So, those are a few things that I want to do. Now, I'll tell you, having been involved in the party and the conservative movement as long as I have, I get really concerned when I hear elected leaders talk about their office. Okay? When we start hearing our leaders talk about their office, it's time for them to go. Because you know what? It's not their office. It's your office. You're the boss. They work for you. And elected leaders tend to forget that they work for you. You can put them in and you can take them out. You know, we were talking about that, Mr. Burns, when stuff happens. The people, you know what, they ultimately hold the power. We can change government today if we want to do it. You know why? Because we have the vote. We can do it. And I don't like it when people talk about their office. It's time for better leadership in Lexington County. And I want to offer that leadership. Holding public office is not a birthright. If it was, we would still have a king. And we got rid of that. This is a privilege and it's an honor to serve the people of Lexington County. I will work hard every day for you. I'm going to conduct a positive campaign that is not based on personalities, but based upon issues. Because you know what? That's what you deserve. You deserve that. You're taxpayers. You're, you're the residents of this county, and you deserve better from your elected leaders. I want to set a good example for the people of this county. Like I said, I will work hard for the people of this county, and I would really appreciate your vote and your consideration in the June primary. Thank you very much. Thank you.